so many people have asked me how I make these delicious chocolate chip chocolate conchas. They are doughy and soft, freeze well, and so far have a 100% approval rating and have even been described by most of my friends and family as the best concha they have ever had. So in today's video, I am sharing step-by-step -step instructions on how you can make them at home all by yourself. So without further ado, let's get into this. So usually when I make these conchas, I use my bread machine to prepare the dough. I choose the dough cycle setting and just throw all of my ingredients inside and press start. But I recognize that not everyone has a bread machine, so we are saying goodbye to it for now and we are breaking out my stand mixer and dough hook. Now if you don't have a stand mixer, all of this can be done by hand and I will explain the slight modifications as we go. Now the recipe that I am going to be sharing can make anywhere from 12 large conchas to 24 smaller ones, depending on how you divide the dough. For the dough, you will need a half a cup of milk, a half a cup of water, one third of a cup of room temperature butter, a third of a cup of sugar, one egg, one teaspoon of salt, three and a half cups of flour, and one tablespoon of yeast. We want to get our liquid somewhere between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. One technique that you can use is microwaving the water for about 45 seconds and then adding the cold milk to the hot water and the temperature should be about where you want it. If the liquid is too hot, it will kill the yeast and you won't have a good rise to the bread. To the warm liquid, add about a teaspoon of the recipe's sugar, as well as the tablespoon of yeast. Then give this a little stir, making sure that all of the yeast comes in contact with the warm liquid. Then let it sit for about five minutes and soon enough you will have a foamy mixture. Add this yeast mixture to your mixing bowl along with your butter, the rest of the sugar, your egg, the flour, and finally the salt. We want there to be some separation between the salt and the yeast, because salt and yeast are not friends. So we want them to come together gradually rather than combining them directly. Then we are going to lower our dough hook and turn it on the lowest setting. I ended up letting my stand mixer mix and knead this dough for about 19 minutes. If you don't have a stand mixer, get ready for an arm workout. You can use a wooden spoon to combine the ingredients until a dough begins to form. Then pour your dough on a flat surface and begin to knead the dough. If you would like a tutorial on how to knead the dough, I'm sure you can find great ones on YouTube. Or let me know down below in the comments that you need me to make one myself, pun intended. Anyways, every few minutes I scrape down my bowl and let my dough hook continue to knead my dough. While that was finishing up, I sprayed a bowl with cooking spray and then formed my dough into a little ball and placed it in my prepared bowl. Thank you. 
I covered this with plastic wrap and selected the proofing option on my oven. This creates a nice warm area for the dough to rise. If you don't have this option on your oven, you can warm your oven to 170 degrees and then turn the oven off and place your dough inside. Or you can always find a warm place in your house to set the dough and leave it there until it doubles in size. While that is rising, let's go ahead and talk about the streusel topping. You are going to need one cup of flour, two thirds cup of powdered sugar, a half of a cup or one stick of butter, a teaspoon of vanilla, and one tablespoon of cocoa powder. I usually use my food processor with a dough blade to mix all of this up, but for the purposes of this video, knowing that not everyone has that, we are going to use my stand mixer again and use the regular paddle attachment this time. Add all of the ingredients to your mixing bowl and before you turn it on, I really suggest covering the mixer with some plastic wrap to avoid any of the powder flying around and going everywhere. Mix the ingredients until a Play-Doh-like consistency forms. And again, if you don't have a stand mixer, just mix this up using a wooden spoon and a bowl until you get the same consistency. We are going to set this aside for a moment and revisit our now risen dough. Now that it has doubled in size, we want to coat our counter with some flour and plop our dough on. I like to give it another small coat of flour on top and then divide the dough into the number of conchas you want. On this day, I divided the dough into 17 close to equal portions. If you want them to be completely identical, you can always use a food scale and make sure that they weigh the exact number of grams. Now to form the dough, you want to take the dough portion in your hand and then pull the outside portions like up of opposite ends and then pinch it together at the top. And I really hope what I'm doing on the camera is better than how I'm describing this with words. We are gonna continue to pull dough from the outer edges of this little ball up to the top and pinch it together and make sure you're getting it around like the entire circumference of your little dough ball. This will make the dough that is touching your hand have a nice smooth surface and that surface will be the top part of your concha. We are going to repeat this process until all of the conchas have been shaped. Now you could stop forming the conchas here, but I like to add in one more little surprise. I am taking what I call a hand pinch of chocolate chips, not a handful, but a hand pinch of chocolate chips and pressing them into the bottom side of my formed conchas. Then I wrap the outer edges of the dough up over the chocolate chips and pinch the dough together, trapping the chocolate chips inside. You don't want to overwork the dough at this stage, like continuing to pull from the outer edges and pinch at the top because otherwise the chocolate chips will essentially be forced out and be exposed on the top of the concha giving it like a really bumpy surface. If the bottoms of your conchas are a little too rough or bumpy we can smooth it out by placing the concha flat on your surface or your countertop and take your hand cup it over the little concha and roll your dough or your hand in a circular motion on the countertop. Then repeat this process until all of the dough balls have received their chocolatey surprise and place them on your baking sheets, giving them a little bit of room to grow. Next, we are going to take some softened butter and spread it on top of each dough ball, just creating like a nice thin layer. Recall that to make the dough, we only used a third of a cup of butter, which isn't quite one full stick. So save that little bit that's remaining for this step. Hey. 
Once all of the dough balls are coated in butter, it is time to add the streusel topping. So take that streusel topping that we mixed before and give it a little knead, especially if it's been kind of sitting out and drying for a bit. Then divide it into equal sized portions. In my case, I'm making 17 equal balls of streusel topping. Again, if you want to be totally precise, you can use a food scale. We are going to take our streusel ball and flatten it out so that it is about a quarter of an inch thick. I like to sandwich my ball between two pieces of parchment paper, and then you can use a large flat surface to press it down, flattening the streusel into a somewhat perfect circle. Then take this flattened streusel and place it on top of one of your dough balls. For the signature concha look, you can take a knife and cut slits into the streusel part only, but since I make these a lot, I have purchased a concha cutter on Amazon. They are pretty inexpensive and make the step a lot easier, but you definitely don't need to get one to create this delicious concha. Then we are going to repeat the steps until all of the conchas are ready. I do want to mention that you can use a rolling pin to flatten out the streusel topping, but really my preferred way is using my tortilla press. Once all of my conchas are assembled, I set them on my stovetop to rise while my oven preheats to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we throw these in for about 13 to 15 minutes depending on the size of the conchas. I have found that when I make 24 smaller conchas using this recipe, they only need about 13 minutes in the oven. But when I make 12 larger ones, they need around 15 minutes in the oven. They are done when the exposed dough on the bottom is like a nice light golden brown. My family enjoys these most when they are fresh out of the oven. They are warm, the chocolate chips are melty, they are just, they really just melt in your mouth. But since we aren't going to eat them all in one sitting, I tend to package the rest up in airtight containers and keep some on the counter or fridge and place the rest in the freezer. They defrost rather quickly and are just as soft and doughy and delicious as the day I made them. Not to toot my own horn, but nearly every single person I have given these to has said that these conchas are the best that they have ever had, and I really hope that if you give this recipe a try, you will come to that conclusion too. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and if you are new here, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe and check out all of my motherhood content, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.